Natasha, everyone. Um, thank you so much for having me here. Thank you, Dr. Regina. That was amazing. Um, uh, really inspirational, and um, I'm sure we've all got something from it. Um, I just really appreciate the opportunity to be here today, and I'd really like to acknowledge Gina and the full seed team for everything that you do, um, and all of you for supporting that. So I think it's fantastic um, what seed do in our community. Uh, I am Michelle Bailey, I'm the General Manager at Sky City Hamilton and it's a role that I've been proud to have for five years. Uh, I lead a fantastic team of over three, about 350 people. Um, and we have a range of bars and restaurants, we have Bowling Social which is Hamilton's only cheap and bowling alley and we also have a casino. I'm married to Dean, I've got three children, um, my son Leo's nearly 14, um, my daughter's Ivy is 11 and my other daughter Polly is 9. So I'm thinking of my husband right now, he's a stay-at-home dad and he's at home with a little girl who's got a temperature of 39.5, so, <laughs> so I'll be dashing home after this. Um, I have many roles and titles, but it's interesting having award-winning CEO used, because it's not actually something that I've used a lot, um, even though I did win um, that title in 2017. And it's interesting, because um, I'm sort of reflecting on why, and it's those questions and those voices that you have in your head and seriously they don't go away and that's true but you can manage them but those voices am I worthy is it okay to blow my own trumpet is it a fear of being knocked down um, it's that good old Kiwi and, and actually learnt when I was on the Gold Coast speaking last week it's actually Australian as well believe it or not um, that whole tall poppy syndrome that we have here um, and you know it's something that we all get impacted by but I am proud to have won the award, and as I reflected, it, it actually reflected a lot of work by the team. Um, and as a leader, it's, it's my role to enable others to create positive change, and that's something we've done over the last few years. It's also important as a woman to be a role model and to stand up, because there's not enough of us, um, and well, there's more of us happening, which is wonderful, but um, sometimes you, ne you need to actually um, see more people standing up. And it's also important for me to, um, to show that you don't have to be a hard ass to succeed. And that's a quote that I love. It was actually written by a colleague of mine. Um, I did the Glo Global Women Tra Breakthrough Leaders Program in 2015, and she wrote that for me. Um, and I thought it was really special, and I think that's really true. You don't have to be a hard ass. You don't have to get to where you want to be at the expense of other people. And if I could demonstrate that through winning that award, then that's something I'm really proud of. Um, ultimately, I think we can achieve great things through leading and being um, more human um, and through having courage, a lot of courage over here, um, and through being kind. Um, I must admit, I also had a few things, Jason and I had a bit of a chat about, um, about rock bottom. I mean, I am very lucky in my life and I have been very, very privileged actually. Um, and so rock bottom obviously does mean different things for different people and, and, and I, I I mean, I have in ways for me, but um, as you know, I, I was thinking, am I are they bad enough? <laughs> am I worthy to be here again? Those voices in your head, which can be bloody annoying. Um, but although, I mean, now I know that I'm actually wise enough, um, and that's actually code for old, um, to know that sometimes the stories we tell ourselves are actually far worse than anything anyone else is thinking, um, uh, or that they will say. So my story's not uncommon, I um, hope it does resonate and that you'll get something um, from it. Um, I entered the world of casinos, entertainment and hospitality in October 1994 when the first casino opened. I had completed a, a Bachelor of Arts in Political Science and Philosophy and an Advanced Certificate in Tourism and Travel, but I couldn't get a job. <laughs> um, so when Christchurch Casino opened in 1994, it was a great opportunity. And I had visions of James Bond and all that glamour and glitz, and um, it's not quite like that. <laughs> um, but it is, it is a lot of fun. But I, I've been in the industry for a long time. I moved to Auckland in 1996 when Sky City opened. and. Um, I was a gaming machine attendant, I was a gaming machine supervisor, an assistant shift manager, a shift manager, a training manager, um, a, and then an operations manager. And then in 2004, it all stopped, and, and I, <laughs> as we went through this major restructure um, for my organisation. And they were proposing to just establish my role. I couldn't believe it, imagine those voices then. I was outraged. and. Uh, all those fears that come in of, this is all I've known, what am I going to do now? 
So <laughs> all of those voices, my, I, I thought the things that were going on in my head and the feelings that I felt, because you do feel very deeply, um, as I thought I had a lack of control over what was happening to me. My fearness trigger, um, it went through the roof, it's unfair. Uh, I've worked so hard to get here, I've worked so hard for this organisation, so how can they do this to me? Um, I felt that I wasn't worthy and I felt really wounded. Um, you know, that whole thing of why don't they want me, why am I not good enough? Um, I remember sitting in a couple of meetings across the table from a man um, I liked and respected, they were all men back then, believe me, um, <laughs> and I cried about the injustice and I brought in a friend who was an HR specialist to support me and cried in front of him as well. I spent money on an employment lawyer as I was convinced that they had made a mistake. Um, they hadn't. <laughs> I basically paid him to tell me that they were doing everything by the book and I now know after being on the other side of the table a few times that they, you know, we do do things by the book. Um, I also know that when I'm on the other side of the table that I have a, a, a deep level of compassion for the people on the other side because I know what it's like to be in that seat. I immediately went to the worst place in my mind. As I said before, they don't want me. This is all I know. What am I going to do? My ego jumped up and down. The doubts and stories went through the roof. I nearly derailed myself through reacting so disproportionately. Through my feelings of injustice, it took me a while and a few conversations with a career advisor to see that I had options. I had a choice to make and I was responsible for how I reacted and approached or embraced that change. As part of the restructure, there were new roles being advertised. Um, there was a role as the hotel manager for Sky City Hotel, which was the busiest hotel in Auckland at that time. I had never considered hotels before. I always thought that you had to start at the bottom as a porter and work your way up, because that's the way that industry worked, a bit like gaming used to be. Um, and I didn't think I could get the role. Um, and I, again, I almost derailed myself through my own self-limiting beliefs. Fortunately, others saw what I could not see, but see very clearly now, that I had a broad range of transferable skills, as do we all. That I was a good leader of people, and that I could learn the things that I did not know about the hotel industry. But I applied for the role, and I got it. Um, and I'm, I'm so grateful that I did. It was really hard at times. I was a new kid on the block. I'd attend industry meetings with hotel managers who'd been there for years. And my voices were like, what am I doing in this room with all these people? Um, but I, I'm glad that I had to ask my team for help often. But it taught me a lot, a lot about leadership over management, particularly that people relate if you say that you don't know, or you'll find out, or if you involve your team and ask them for their ideas and solutions. I learned to trust others because I was surrounded by people who knew more than what I did. And it's really valuable to do that. When I look back, I was lucky to have been given an opportunity to grow using a squiggly line. And I think you guys know a bit more about squiggly lines than what, than what I did in my previous. I, it used to always be this way. And you worked really hard to get there. And sometimes people did that at any cost. And that's something we're trying to do differently now, is you can be squiggly. That, that helps, especially in this world. And you don't have to... Um, you know, lead the same way the person before you did. Lead differently and challenge that hierarchical and command and control structure. When I look back, I was be uh, lucky to be given an opportunity to grow. I had a further opportunity to do that in 2015 when I attended the Global Women Breakthrough Leaders Program. And that actually taught me to recognise when my ego was talking. It taught me to put my voice in perspective, in my, the voices in my head. Um, usually only one voice, by the way. <laughs> um, and to be more authentic in my leadership. And something I wish I had known in 2004. Knowing I have transferable skills and that I didn't know, need to know everything um, was liberating. It set me on a path to apply for other roles and experiences, from hotels to projects. And then in 2008, I moved down to Queenstown for my first property general manager role. I was in Queenstown for six years and moved to Hamilton in 2014. 
I sometimes wonder if I would actually be in this role if I hadn't been shaken out of my comfort zone when my role was just established in 2004. Although I felt that I was at rock bottom at the time in my career, it was definitely a springboard to my success. And that's often the case. It's okay to fail, and that's often how we learn and how we grow. I just wish I'd had that broader perspective um, that I had now back then. I mean, perspective is everything. And sometimes you need to step back, you need to talk to other people to get that perspective. Ask yourself, what's the worst that can happen here? Um, nothing ended up as bad as what I was telling myself it would be. There would have been less tears, which I'm sure the men around me would have appreciated if I had just known that at the time. Um, so some key things I learned. Um, change happens. Expect it. What served you in the past may not serve you in the future. Skills are transferable for all of us. Find out what your transferable skills are and think about what doors they can open for you. You don't need to know everything and you can learn what you don't know, especially in this fast-paced world. Learning needs to be constant. Most people will take a chance on you, but you need to believe in yourself. Put things in perspective and listen to the stories you are telling yourself. Often they're just stories, so tell a different one. You have choice. A lot of what I've done is actually through embracing opportunities and saying yes. But I know that I actually have a choice. I can plan what's next. That's really powerful. You all have a choice too. What do you want to do? What's your strategy to help you get there? How will you bridge the gap between where you are now and your vision of where you want to be? Is it a project, a mentor, a change in role, or in some cases a change in your own attitude and stories you tell yourself? Surround yourself with good people. Having a support network is vital, um, and life is better when we connect and share with others. Remember who you are and what's important to you. It's really important. Over years of working in professional roles, it took me a while to remember who I was. I put on a mask over the years, a mask of perfection, a mask of having to be this great leader or of, you know, do things the same way as the person before me had. And sometimes it takes a while to pull those masks down and really understand who you are again. But it's really important to do it um, and to know who you are and what's important to you. Also, don't take yourself too seriously. I mean, life is meant to be fun. So, again, if you put things in perspective, um, that, that helps too, if you can just have a bit of a laugh at yourself. You are unique and you are enough. Um, and this is a quote from Cinderella, it's one I've used a bit actually. Um, I did a talk for a woman in gaming and hospitality event in the Gold Coast last week. Um, but it, it's something that, it's funny when I say it's from Cinderella, but um, there's no prince coming to the rescue here, you need to rescue yourselves. But I think a really important message in, in this world, um, in, in, career, in our workplaces and our lives, is to have courage. Um, to put yourself forward, your true self, to speak up for what's not right, um, put forward your ideas, um, but be kind when you do that. Be kind to yourself and be kind to others. Namihi <coughs> nui. Thank you.